Hey YouTube, uh, welcome to video number seven, which is part two of two on getting your new pack solo mining. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if I get enough subscribers, YouTube will let me take a cut of their ad revenue, which would be really appreciated. Um, they're going to show ads on my videos regardless, so the way I figured is I might as well get a cut. So uh, today's the big day. Uh, let's review how far we've come real quick. We've assembled a Raspberry Pi uh, with the SSD hard drive. You're connected to the internet. Uh, you have a fully downloaded uh, Bitcoin D blockchain. Uh, and of course, we cannot mine until the blockchain is fully downloaded and running. Uh, we have a configured Bitcoin.com file. We've created a wallet. Uh, you've probably called it lottery. Uh, you've loaded it. Uh, we've created a new address inside the wallet, which would be used for receiving coins should we actually solve a block. And uh, we've compiled BFG Miner and uh, CG Miner mining software. So at this point, it's time to go ahead and plug in your USB hub into one of the USB ports on your Raspberry Pi. Power up the hub and uh, plug in your new pack miners. It really doesn't matter how many uh, new pack miners you have. The instructions will be the same for uh, whether you have one or you have many. Okay, this next part I'm showing you in case you're running any problems with Ubuntu, uh, seeing your miners. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this. If you roll through these steps and everything is uh, working good for you with your miners, then you don't have to worry about this part. But if you are having a problem, what this will show you is whether Ubuntu is actually seeing your USB miners or not. And if it's not, you might think about starting with a reboot first. Maybe that could solve the problem for you. But if, if that's not the case, uh, that's what this file will tell us is whether it actually sees the miner. So as you can see there in the uh, directory structure, I created a file with Vi called find USB. And uh, so I already have already created it, but uh, the way we would do this would be uh, sudo Vi and uh, find USB. And this is just pretty much right in my home directory. And you can see right here, this is what you'll need to copy and paste into this file right here. So once you've got all that typed in or copied and pasted, you, uh, well first before you can paste it in there, remember if you, just a quick fire refresher, you'll have to hit the uh, insert button on your keyboard then paste it in, and then uh, press the escape button. So right now I'm insert. If I press escape, that takes us out of insert. Then colon WQ, which means write and quit. Now that we have this file, we need to make it executable. We'll issue a chmod 777 find USB. Now we can run it. And there you can see my three Gecko Science New Pack Bitcoin miners. So that's what I have plugged in right now. I have three of them plugged in on this computer, and uh, it sees all three of them. So now let's verify that Bitcoin D is fully downloaded and running with top. And you can see it right here. It is running. Bitcoin D. We can exit uh, top with the Q for quit. And we're back at the front. Okay, so next let's uh, load our wallets. Um, first, let's just check our wallet name in case you forgot. Uh, yours is probably called Lottery uh, based on our previous videos, but uh, let's change directory to our wallet location and see what the name of the file is. In your case, it's going to be here. And when I do an LS, we can see, in my case, the name of my wallet is test uh, on this particular computer. Like I said, yours is probably called lottery, but that's okay. Next, let's go to where um, our Bitcoin um, bind directory is, so we can issue some commands. Now let's load up our wallet. Now we're not going to be using sudo because 
where you need the wallet to load um, without root permissions. We want it to run with user permissions. And in my case, mine is named test. And it's loaded. Yours might say it's already loaded if it's already loaded. Now let's find the address that's inside of this wallet that we're using for Bitcoin. And this is the number that we are interested in here. So you might want to copy this number out of here onto a notepad or something. We're going to need this in just a minute. So this is the address that we are telling the miner to use to deposit coins to actually solve a block. Very quickly, let's verify our bitcoin.com file. We need to get uh, the right username and password because we're going to need this. Let's open it up with Vi. And as you can see, username is for me is test user and test pass for password. We're going to need whatever you have in there. You're going to need that. All right, so let's go into the uh, BFG Miner folder and load up BFG Miner. Let's exit out of this, colon Q. where we built BFG Miner, and we are going to issue this command right here. So let's talk about this real quick. We're going to be loading up BFG Miner. Uh, this is the port number. Here's our username that from the comp file, password from the comp file. This here is our um, uh, address inside our wallet to send coins to. And then this is what turns BFG Miner into a proxy like we talked about in the last video, Stratum port. This is the port that CG Miner is going to connect to, which you'll see shortly. So let's go ahead and run this. And pretty much this is what you should be seeing right here. So it's basically uh, now just waiting for something interesting to happen. So at this point, maybe you're wondering, since BFG Miner is taking up this screen, how am I going to simultaneously run CG Miner if BG Miner is already running? And of course, that would be correct. So we're going to use a utility called Screen, which will allow us to have several virtual screens running inside of our single physical screen. And we'll be able to switch back and forth between the virtual screens. So let's quit out of uh, BFG Miner with the letter Q. And by the way, notice that when we ran BFG Miner, we ran it without sudo. And, um, but you'll see when we go to run uh, CG Miner in just a few minutes here, we will use sudo. And the reason for this is uh, a privileged user is required in order to access USB ports on, the, on any of the computers for Ubuntu. Uh, we'll fix this uh, in a, probably the next video. All right, so same almost the same command but now we're running with a, com a command called screen and so let's copy this and i'll explain what all this means here in just a second let's get it in there hit enter and notice it returned me back to the command prompt so let's connect to this so let's see how we're going to do that so first we're going to do screen ls to see what virtual terminals are running and there you can see it. There's our BFG Miner screen. So how do we connect to this? We're going to reattach to it with um, screen-r. So let's see here. I have this stuff in here. Screen-r. And then we need the uh, number, which in this case is right here, 2618. This number will be different for you. And 
and there it is. Now, to exit out of this, uh, do not press Q. We don't want BFG minor to stop. We just want to get out of the screen. We want BFG minor to continue to run. So to properly exit out, uh, what we're going to do, the easiest way to do this is to issue a control, hold the control down on your keyboard, the letter A and the letter D. And it just detached. But we can still verify that it's running with uh, issuing the screen LS again. And as you can see, it is running. Before we load up uh, CG Minor, let's uh, look at what these uh, screen command line options mean. And the dash D means to run it detached. The M means new session, and the S is uh, what gives it a name. So we said S, BFG Minor, and you can kind of see the name here. It created it right there. So it, it, you'll see when there's when you have multiple things running, you'll want to know what the difference is between them, and then we do that with the name. So we used, uh, to detach from our BFG minor screen, we used the control A and D together. You could alternately just type in screen dash D with the uh, number 2618, and it would have detached you out of there as well. So now comes the big part. Let's load up CG minor and uh, start mining. Uh, first, we need to know what frequency we're going to run at, and the higher the frequency that you put in this command, uh, which is right here, um, the hotter that these new packs are going to run, but the more work they'll do. So, if you do not have a USB fan like I have, and you're not in an air-conditioned room, I recommend not going uh, any more than uh, 100. And 100 would yield uh, 20, about 21 giga hashes per second. Um, and I'm just kind of theorizing here. Um, you know, the hotter you run these, you run the risk of actually destroying them if they get too hot. So you kind of have to weigh out the temperature of your room, you know, whether you have air conditioning, you got a little fan running. Um, for example, if you have air conditioning in your room but you're not blowing a fan on them, maybe you can go to 150. Uh, 150 would give you. Uh, 33. I'm not really telling you what to do here, but I just want you to be aware of the potential danger of actually destroying these by having them get too hot. So in my little office here, I've got air conditioning. I got the little mini fan running. I've been running them safely at 350 megahertz, uh, which yields 78 uh, giga hashes per second. So that's, that's pretty quick. I think there are people running these at around 90 to 110, but that's that's probably pushing it pretty high. And I think the other th uh, worry might be that if you start running them at too high of a frequency, they start producing errors. So you start seeing a lot of blocks dropped um, when you're trying to solve blocks. You start seeing the errors creep in. And when we run CG Minor, you're going to see the screen come up that has all the parameters on it. I'm going to save all those parameters for another video. I just kind of want to get you mining on this video. So here we go, here's the big moment. We're going to do the screen again. This time, notice we're going to be running it with sudo. And uh, as soon as we run this, we're gonna to have to go right into the screen because it's gonna to wanna to know the password. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Here's my Bitcoin address and here's my frequency. So I'm gonna just copy this in there. There we go and enter. Now let's do screen dash ls, and we're going to be connecting to this one, 2673, so it's going to be screen dash r 2673, enter, wants to know my password. Um, okay, so like a dummy, I forgot to change directories, so we have to get out of the BFG minor directory and go into our Bitcoin uh, directory in our home directory. So for you, it's going to be uh, cd uh, slash home slash Bitcoin slash cg miner. Now we can issue this command.
And in a later video, hopefully maybe the next video, we'll get all this automated so you don't have to go through all these steps like we're doing. Okay, now let's take a look. Screen-ls, screen-r, 2720 is probably going to want the password. There we go. Starting up. And this is what you should be seeing. I'm interested in this number right here. These, these uh, numbers right here should start coming up based on what frequency you put in. You can see all three miners are working. This is pretty much what you should be seeing if everything's working normally. There's a lot to cover on this screen. Uh, I want to spend a little time on the next video talking about the difficulty. This is uh, a good number to know. And that's it. We're mining. I know this has been uh, long awaited. So again, next video, let's talk about the uh, more about this CG miner screen we're looking at, automating the startup, uh, the falling difficulty levels, password protecting our wallet, and uh, another thing we could talk about too is our inbound and outbound connections to other blockchains. This will become important, and I think uh, you will we'll want to touch on this a little bit. Um, basically, what that what I'm getting at here is if you actually do solve a block, we want to disseminate that information out to the internet as soon as possible, because uh, a lot about who wins the Bitcoin, who whoever solves a block, the who wins sometimes uh, depends on a matter of seconds. So, for example, you solve a block, and then five seconds later, somebody on the other side of the world actually solves the block too. Uh, how do we know who won? You know, which of you two is the real winner? And that's that's a whole other conversation. So that's it for this video. So hopefully um, this is, I know it's been long awaited. So uh, hopefully you guys can start mining now. Thanks for watching and please do uh, subscribe and like. Thank you.